Hi, One Fam. It's awesome to have you join us today. I'm Jennifer, and I'm excited to welcome you to church. We have people tuning in from all over the world, and we would love to know where you're connecting from. So feel free to share your location with us in the comment section. If you're in Lagos, Abuja, in the US, just share it. You never know, you might just make a new friend today. As we start the service, get ready to have an amazing time in God's presence. We believe that he has something special in store for you, and we encourage you to share your insights or blessings you receive in the comment section. We're always looking for ways to improve and serve you better. So if you have any feedback for us, please don't hesitate to share it. And if you're not already following us on all social media platforms, we would love for you to join us. You'll be notified of all our upcoming services and events. And if you have friends or family who you think would enjoy this experience, feel free to invite them to join us too. There's a love in sharing. If you have a testimony, we would love to hear it. Your story could inspire and encourage someone else. This year has been our year of access and enlargement, and we're excited to see what God has in store for us. So prepare to disconnect from all distractions and immerse yourself in God's presence as we connect you to the main service. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you have a blessed time with us. See you! this evening because he is worthy of the glory of the honor and the praise hey we bless you jesus you deserve the glory and the honor we bless you jesus we bless you jesus we bless you You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. I'm seeking you as a praise just drop. And to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. And so we say, Jesus, the Lamb of God, worthy is your Jesus 
Praise God. Welcome to yet another midweek service. I'm believing God that it's going to be a wonderful experience. And it's quite an exciting one for me to be here with you again tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. I, I just want to appreciate you for your consistency and um, always making our time, you know, to, you know, be here to fellowship. Amen. I want to believe that your week has been productive, you know, full of God's blessings and favor. And I pray that the remaining days of this week is going to be, you know, with God's, you know, you know, you know, you know, unimaginable blessings, you know, such that your heart, you know, can uh, neither think nor imagine. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please do well to like, to comment, and to share the link. Please spread the word to your friends, to your neighbors, to your loved ones, so they can also, you know, be a part of uh, this experience and be blessed. Uh, perhaps you are driving. Please, um, you may not um, have to watch, but just listen. Or better still, you could create time after now to listen to, you know, watch and listen to the broadcast. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want us to say a word of prayer before we um, go into tonight's um, teaching. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for life in good health. We thank you for sound mind. We thank you for this privilege of giving us once again to gather at your, you know, at your feet, in your presence, to be blessed of thee. Thank you once again. Father, as your word will be coming forth, it will come forth with precision. In the name of Jesus, your, 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 your power will find expression through the words tonight and it will minister to every heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Even as I speak, I speak not of the enticing words of man's wisdom, but as your spirit gives me utterance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight we'll be looking at an interesting topic, a special one of that. It's called the integrity of God's word. The integrity of God's word. Word. I just want us to look at the golden text that will be taken that's, uh, that's from the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19, and it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken? And will he not make it good? Hallelujah. I take that again. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? The integrity of God's word. Let's just look at 
the word called integrity. What is integrity? Of course, general meaning of the word will say to be honest, you know, being honest. You know, the pristine quality of being honest. But integrity, as the definition goes, is the quality or the state of being complete or undivided. The quality or the state of being complete or undivided. Hallelujah. Of course, it has some synonyms. Um, synonyms are just different words having the same meaning. So let's just see a, a, a couple of them. Incorruptible. Of course, um, firm adherence to a code of conduct or to a moral standard or an artistic value. Um, yes, incorruptible. Um, the other one says completeness. I think from the, from the definition we, um, we have of integrity, the quality or the state of being complete, of being, you know, whole, of being undivided. And the other one says um, soundness. Oh, soundness. Um, <clears throat> the quality of being, uh, of being unimpaired. The integrity of God's word. Please, would you just turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7 from verses 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27. And I read. He says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, he will liken himself to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the flood came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on on the rock hallelujah but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them would be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall Great was its fall. Once again, the focal point here to accessing the integrity of God's words is predicated upon the word obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Obedience, I said. That word obedience. He says, if any man who hears this word and hearkens to this word, he shall be like the rock that when all the tumults of life, when all the, you know, the vicissitudes of life came on it, it was still standing. It was still firm, unshaken, unwavering. Hallelujah. God's word prepares us for the storm of life. That's how potent his word is. It's so powerful that it prepares us for the storm of life. Hallelujah. Let's look at the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verses 16 to 17. Verses 16 to 17. And it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good work. 
Amen. So the scriptures or the word of God is given for us to be well equipped. For us to be well, you know, equipped, prepared. For us to be solid. Hallelujah. To be solid. So that when you find yourself at those particular times, at those particular times with some rough experience, you can still stand. Amen. You can still stand. I mean, notwithstanding the stark realities, even of the present time, it is the word of God that will keep you. It is the word of God that will sustain you. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. The word of God is what God has, I mean, is saying concerning us or has said concerning you. The word of God is the promise of God for your life. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Please, let's look at Isaiah 41, verses 10. We are still on that word that says God's word prepares us for the storm of life. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Just a minute, please. Okay. Isaiah 41 verse 10. It says, and I read, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. The remaining days of this year, I believe there are many things you have, you know, set for yourself as plans. There are goals and targets you have, you know, well marshaled out that you are going to achieve. And perhaps there could be one or two, you know, you know, you know, concerns, one or two challenges. But this is what the word of God is saying. To you today. He says, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Notwithstanding your plans and all that, when all these other troubles and problems of life come, many causes of life, the ups and downs of life come. He said, I will help you. I will hold you with my right hand of righteousness. You shall not be moved. And when the Lord is saying that he's going to help you, of course, you should be rest assured that your plans will come to pass. And that is your portion in the name of Jesus. There are some scriptures quickly that I will just be, I will just dole out. I mean, I will just mention so that we can um, maybe uh, at a, 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 a spare time, we can look at them. Of course, John chapter 16, verse 33. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9, Isaiah 43, from verses 1 to 2, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Lamentation chapter 3, verses 21 to 24, and then Isaiah 54, verse 10. Praise the Lord. You could just do well, take your time, and go through those portions of the scriptures again, and you'll be blessed. Amen. A lot is actually happening in our world today. But what will keep us through, what will keep us triumphant, what will keep us, you know, you know, still standing tall in the face of these challenges is nothing but the Word of God. It's nothing but the Word of God. In the Word of God lieth our succor. In the Word of God lieth our comfort. We find comfort. We find peace from the word of God. Of course, you'll find that in the book of John chapter 16, verses 33. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the integrity of God's word. It cannot fail. 
If the Lord has said a thing, it would definitely come to pass. And what is he saying? He says, I will be with you. Do not be afraid. I will help you. Hallelujah. The book of Isaiah 50 verse 7. I think it says, I know that my God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore shall I not be afraid. I've set my face as a flint to neither, you know, sway to the right nor to the left because I know that I shall not be ashamed. That is your portion this year. The Lord will help you in every area in the name of Jesus. The word of God cannot lie. The word of God cannot lie. As we saw it in the book of Numbers, where, where we read from the, uh, no, uh, from the golden text. Numbers 23, verse 19. The word of God cannot lie. Amen. His word is yea and amen. Please, would you, you would join me to the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. And it says that by two immutable things, God cannot lie. It makes it very impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. Amen. Just to back that up, let's look at Psalm 119 verses 89. Verses 89 and it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, your word is is settled in heaven. Has the Lord said a thing? Never doubt it. Because it will come to pass. Has the Lord said a thing? Whatever he says must come to pass. Like I said earlier, that the focal point or the focus of tonight's teaching on the integrity of God's word is predicated on the word obedience. You want to see the integrity of God's word. Be ready to obey his word. Be ready to obey his instructions. Be ready to follow after every step. Every step he gives you. Be ready to adhere strictly to his commands. You will see the word of God find expression in your life that will be your portion this year in the name of jesus hallelujah isaiah 55 verses 8 to 13 it says for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and board, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God cannot lie. Whatever he has said concerning you will come to pass. And what he has said concerning you is that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the first and not the last. You are the best of your kind. That is the word of God concerning you. So whatever you are doing, whatever you, as you go about your plans, as you go about, you know, achieving the set goals and the targets, just know that, you know, you are not designed, you are not created, you are not crafted for less you are made to be the best you are made for the best hallelujah hallelujah 
That is the promise of God for your life. Everything that has to do with you shall be great. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Just some more scriptures, but I'll just leave that to you. You can look at Romans chapter 3 verse 4. And then um, the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. Hallelujah. The next um, uh, point here is that God and his word are one. God and his word are one. Of course, we'll find that. Let's just um, uh, uh, look at the book of John chapter 1 from verses 1 to 3. The book of John chapter 1 from verses 1 to 3. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Amen. God and His Word is one. Now, of course, you know, when, when, when we refer to the word in the Bible, if, if you look at that um, uh, um, verse, the word there is with a capital W. It's talking about a personality. And of, and of course, we know that that is Jesus Christ. He is the eloquence and the final word of God. Hallelujah. And so God and his word, they are what? One. You cannot separate God from his word. Amen. The essence of his being is his word. Hallelujah. Just turn with me briefly to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 3. It says, By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are what? Visible. The world itself that we live in today was formed, was framed by His Word. His Word cannot fail. The integrity of God's Word is what is keeping us all today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you cannot separate Him from His Word. Of course, there's a place in the Scriptures where He, where he said, He has so much exalted, He has magnified His Word above even His name. You will see that in the book of, I think, Psalms chapter 138, verses 2. Psalm 138, uh, verses 2. He has even exalted his word above his name. You cannot just separate God from his, you know, word. Hallelujah. So that takes us back to the book of John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was was God in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in him all things were made and so in him all things consists so that was why I said you say you cannot just say, you can't say because he is the word hallelujah amen you can't separate him from the word. And he says, all things do what consists in him. So that's why I said that you and I, okay, are where we are today because of the word of God. It just cannot fail. Think for a minute that the word of God failed. What would happen is unimaginable. Hallelujah. And that is why he's God. Amen. That is why he is what? God. The next word here is God's word remains when the words of men fade or fail. God's word remains when the word of men fade or fails. The word of God is consistent. He is consistent. The, is so consistent, it cannot fail. He remains faithful to the good and the bad. He's so consistent. Amen. The same rain, the same sun shines on everybody. 
He has never thought like a man because this one um, um, did me wrong because Mr. B, you know, did um, X, Y, Z, you know, committed X, Y, Z offense against me. And so I'm going to punish him by just taking, taking away some, uh, you know, some of these privileges he has been enjoying. No. We read somewhere in the scriptures that say his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Hallelujah. That is why his word cannot fail. He is everything. Amen. So when the words of men fail, when their words fade, it says the word of God will remain. Has man promised and failed you before? Oh, yes, they have. Many times. <laughs> Many times men have promised me and have failed. And that is why you'll be doing yourself a disservice to put your hope in man. You will do yourself a disservice to put your hope in man. Because man will fail. You put all your expectations in man. Man is man. In fact, uh, you, know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, you know, failing in words or in commitments by man is one of those qualities that makes him, you know, frail. It's one of those qualities that makes him uh, um, uh, imperfect. But thanks be to God that the one who's, who, who formed us in his own image and likeness is perfect in all his ways. And that's why the Bible speaking, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall do what? He shall direct your path. So do not even lean on your understanding, thinking of putting your hope and expectation or your faith in man. Because man will fail. Amen. Let's look at the scriptures. Isaiah 40 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8. It says there. It says it says that the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God standeth forever. He said the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God standeth forever. It stands forever. It remains forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians Chapter 1, verses 20. Amen. Is anyone being blessed here? He says, For all the promises of God in him are yea and amen unto the glory of God. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus concerning you has been settled. Is yea and what? Amen. Yes and amen. The Bible speaking it says, Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So God's word remains even when the words of man fail. Hallelujah. And he is promising, in fact, he's, he's saying to you today that I am with you even to the utmost parts of the earth. I am with you even to the utmost parts of the earth. Friends may have left you. Oh, yes, it's normal of man. It's expected of man. That is one of man's ca characteristics. They may have forsaken you. Sometimes you feel, oh, people you actually helped in the past or those that should be there for you this time are just nowhere to be found. Some are even dodging in, you know, your calls. They wouldn't pick your calls and all that. That is man for you. All that is required of you right now is to hold on to this God. Hold him by his word. Hold him by his word. Not with a doubt in your heart, but your heart full of faith. You will see him come through for you. You will see your life turn around. Hallelujah. What the enemy meant for evil, 
you will see God turn it around for good in your life. And that's your portion in the name of Jesus. Put your trust, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in the word of God. Let it be the premise upon which you stand. Let it be the premise of your existence. And you will never be put to shame. You will never be ashamed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. It says, And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. I take that again. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. The Lord is on your side. Every good thing you lay your hands upon will prosper. Your plans, you will see them come to pass. The Lord will help you in every area where you need or you desire His divine intervention, provided you hold Him by His word, provided you stay on His word, unwavering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fifth one, the fifth one here, yes, it says that God's word is God's signature. God's word is his what? Is his signature. Amen. Amen. A signature signifies approval. A signature is a bond. A signature signifies what is called covenant. Like we saw in the book of Psalm 138 verse 2. He says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise the name of thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified the word above all the name. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. For thou hast magnified your word above all thy name. So the signature of God signifies, or his word signifies his signature, signifies approval. Hallelujah. All of God's promises for you, all of God's promises for you are contained in his word. In his word. You want to know the promises of God for your life? Search it out in his word. And let me tell you, whatever he has said concerning you will come to pass. Nothing can stop it. Like I said, provided that your trust and your faith is locked in on him. Your trust and your faith, okay, are locked in on him. In strict obedience to his instructions. Of course, we studied last week, says instruction is life. You follow, you, I mean, you, 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 you stay to, to strict adherence to his word. You will never be disappointed. Hallelujah. Just to conclude on this part, Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45 from verses 22, I read. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Verses 23 says, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said he has sworn by himself. He has sworn by himself, by his word. Amen. He has sworn by himself that the word has gone out of his mouth. It will not return back to him void. Amen. 24 says, he shall say, surely in the Lord I have, I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incensed against me. 
Whether you like it or not, there are people who do not want the best for you this season. There are people that are just waiting to see you, you know, just, just vanish, just, you know, sublime into the thin, thin air. People just, there are people that don't have good wishes for you. In fact, every day they, they, they are looking forward to seeing you go down. But that will not be your portion. And this is what the Lord is saying. Because he has promised you in his word. He says he will put them to shame. He shall say surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incensed against me. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Fix your mind upon the word of God, upon what he's saying concerning you. Lock in everything on him. And you will never be disappointed. The integrity of God's word here is that the word of God cannot fail. It's infallible. It cannot just fail. Very impossible. There are three things to note about God and his promises concerning you. Number one, God's promises are activated by our faith in Him. God's promises, okay, they are activated. God's promises are activated by our faith in Him. So you want to see the Word of God, you know, you know, you know, come to pass in your life, you must exercise faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must believe in His ability. Believe in what He can do without the doubt in your heart because doubt shrinks faith. Hallelujah. So when you do not believe, don't expect to receive anything from God. Believe His word. And you will see your heart desires. You will see his promises concerning you come to pass in the name of Jesus. Number two, the promise is always bigger than your circumstances. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is bigger than anything you might be faced with. Or you might be facing today. God is bigger than any of that. You are the only limit to what God can do in your life. And so you want to see God move. You just have to tell yourself, look, I just have to align with his word. Align with his word and you will see that thing that looks like a mountain before you crumble. Every mountain before you is brought low. Every mountain before you is brought low. It's made the plain. In the name of Jesus. The Bible speaking says, in the presence of the Lord, mountains melt like wax. That circumstance that has, you know, that has just been there standing tall before you. is brought low today. In the name of Jesus. Hold on to his word. Stand upon the word of God. For therein is power. The power of God is able to bring you out of every mess. The power of God in his word is able to deliver you from anything in the name of Jesus. Your confession of his word is key. Your confession moves God's, you know, it moves God's word from potential to power. Now the question is, what do you confess? Your confession of God's word is key. Keep saying it. Don't stop saying it. Keep saying it. Don't stop saying it. When you, when, when, especially when you pray. When you pray, you pray the word of God. When you pray the word of God, you activate angelic oppression. You activate angelic assistance. In fact, you put them to work immediately. 
because they are bounded, they, 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 are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are bound to, you know, to, 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 to walk, you know, to walk with God's word. They, they, they are bounded by the word of God. And so when you, when you keep praying the word, when you keep speaking the word, you don't stop, you keep speaking, you activate supernatural power. You activate supernatural intervention. You see the supernatural come and take over natural circumstances. When you pray the word of God. And here it is saying it will leave the state of potential energy. To what is called power. Of course those days in school as a physicist will say you know potential energy and um, kinetic energy. Potential energy is still energy stored. It has so much power in it. It can do so much, but it's just there. It's just there, stored, not being used. It's just there. But it has so much power. But to move it, to convert it from that state to the form of power in motion, form of energy in motion, putting things, you know, to work, you know, the operational power of God, to bring to pass anything that is, that's your, that's your heart desire. It must, the word of God must leave the state of, you know, potential, you know, to power. Maybe to kinetic, you know, to <laughs> kinetic, to something, you know, power in motion. Power in motion. And that has to do a lot with your confession. That has to do a lot with you're confessing the word of God when you pray. And the Bible says, when you pray, believe. Hallelujah. When you pray, believe. Because you cannot claim to have faith or exercise faith without, you know, you, you really, you know, trusting God and knowing on your inside that what you have, you know, what you have asked God for will come to pass, or you have it already. Praise the Lord. My prayer for you is that this season, as you go about your plans, as you go about your, 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 your dreams, as you go about your aspirations, as you go about, you know, everything you have set, you know, to achieve, your steps and the processes you're going to be taken with predicated upon the word of God. The power of God through his word will find expression in your life. The power of God through his word will find expression in your life. We find expression in your family. We find expression in your business, at your place of work. Any good thing your hands find to do, you will see the power of God at work in the name of Jesus The Lord bless you, multiply you a thousand times in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, we thank you for this privilege. Thank you for your word. Your word is able to make us. It is able to build us. It is able to strengthen us. We pray, O oh God, and every day of our lives, we will live our lives, we, we, we will live having your word as the very first thing on the tablet of our hearts. We will live running with your word. We will live saying your word, speaking it, doing it, practicing it, exercising it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to believe you've had a great time once again in God's presence. Amen. The word of God is power. Please do not forget that. Anything you are doing, let his word be on the tablet of your heart every now and then. Do not doubt his word. Do not think less of his word. Let it always be in your subconscious and in your conscious. And you will see yourself, you know, you know, you know, climbing, you know, the ladder of life 
you know, making wave in life. And, you know, you just see yourself walking supernaturally. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So at this hour, I just want us to um, welcome our guests uh, for you joining us today. I want to believe that you are blessed. We love you so much. We, we, we appreciate your presence. And for as many that, uh, that have been consistent, you know, even tonight, I want to really appreciate you for your consistency. So please, for our guests, just look on the screen there. You will see the QR code. Please make use of it and let's have your details. You can do well to um, join our, you know, our physical experience. Okay, please just let's have your details and you can leave a comment down there and we'll get through to you within the week. The Lord bless you. The Lord prosper you in the name of Jesus. The word of God, I mean, God's word in your life, in your heart will make that difference, that difference you've been looking for as you practice his word as you hold on to his word, as you do much more with it, the Lord will come through for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we want to give and we'll give bountifully and cheerfully. Of course, we don't come before the king empty-handed. I just want us to say a word of prayer and um, as we give our offerings tonight, please, you just look at the screen. You will see the various ways we um, give the various bank account details. Please do well, make use of whichever one suits, suits you, and um, you um, uh, you can give make you know give unto the Lord. Amen. Let's just pray, Father. We thank you for once again this privilege of giving us to give. We thank you for um, the abundance you have blessed us with, and out of it, O King of Glory, we are giving to you. Just a talking to appreciate you for all that you've done. Even if our body were full of mouth, it's not enough to still thanking you and blessing you so much for your goodness. But Lord, from the depth of our hearts, we give. And so accept it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Amen. God bless you so much. We we'll love you. And we um, look forward to seeing you again next week. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed week. Bye. Many years ago, around 2018 AD, a light shone bright in Shangotedu, and a church was born. The pillars of the church were created by spirit-filled people inspired by the Holy Spirit. They are one sound. to win souls through spirit-filled songs and ministrations. One media to bring the imagination of the church to life on the big screen. Ushering protocol hospitality and traffic at the front-facing units. They ensure orderliness in and out of service, making members and guests comfortable. Membership team helps new members in one church to know more about us, especially what makes us family. Maturity team helps to continue the process of spiritual growth as you strive to reflect the nature of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. The prayer unit upholds the congregation and the community in prayer. This year, One Church has reached out to even more people to continue to grow as one family through the Life Group program with eight different locations across the city. We are growing smaller to grow bigger. The church has encouraged the growth of both genders by setting up a men's ministry known as King's Men and a women's ministry known as One Woman's Network. But its message isn't just for adults. The junior church and the teen's church ensure that our future is being nurtured the right way God intended. So why would you stick around one church? Because we care for our family. We want them to grow in all areas of their life with the best kind of foundation there is, the foundation of Christ. We invite you to join our services Sundays, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., both online and on-site. First-timers can pick up a welcome pack at the hospitality stand in exchange for the guest card received during service. Also, join us on Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m., online, showing on all our social media platforms. Do come along with a friend. 
we have a surprise for you. See you soon.